Happy holidays, everyone. It's that time of year where everyone 14 and over suffers for two weeks straight. And then after, they gorge themselves on cookies, hot cocoa, and some good old holiday cheer. While we do this, I know that we all have a favorite Christmas movie. Some, it might be Elf, some Christmas Vacation. And if you have amazing taste, you love the rom-com featuring Jack Black titled The Holiday. But what if I told you I know the best and the most insane Christmas movie of all time. Samantha, an American Girl Doll Holiday. You've definitely heard of it before. If you've not already seen this movie, buckle in because you are in for a ride. It explores really meaningful themes like family, woman suffrage, child labor, abusive orphanages, and being in love with your uncle. Yeah. It's all covered. Also, hi, what's up, Power Room today? It's Mebby, and there are a lot more of you guys now. Thank you so, so, so much for the love in the last video. If you haven't seen it already, go watch it after this one. All the recent love and support genuinely like means the world to me. You don't understand. And now I have to think of a celebration, not only for a thousand subscribers, but for 2000 subscribers. So if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. <laughs> but I'm so glad that there are so many more of you guys now because that means I get to introduce you to this classic. So if you guys don't already know, Samantha is from the American Girl Doll franchise. But needless to say, it was a statement on my childhood because my sister had her doll and I would steal that doll and then get in trouble and I legit know nothing about Samantha except like what I get from this movie which honestly is more than other people probably know I think I know more about American Girl yeah. than you do you never any American girls. so why is this Christmas movie so iconic and lives rent-free in my head to the point where I don't ever see it leaving let's just watch and find out also I know I'm describing this as a Christmas movie because of the literal title and the themes in it, but nothing even like Christmas related happens till the last 20 minutes of the movie. So I'm just letting you know that before we get into it. So we open with this nice shot that tells us it's 1904. So just keep that in mind because it really shoves in your face that this is 1904 throughout the whole movie. And honestly, right off the bat, I'm gonna be so for real, I could cry. This, uh, this just opening shot in this song is literally just, it's not an establishment of the time period and the location, it's an establishment of my childhood. I, take this song and inject it into me. It's, ugh. You're so dumb, you probably think three times four is 12. Three times four is 12, Eddie. Oh! So Samantha is obviously a savage and that is established right off of the bat because she knows how to climb a tree and she knows how to do math. This is Eddie Ryland. He's annoying, irrelevant, and a redhead, which I think is where their rivalry starts. I think she just hates redheads. Anyway, the kids are running around. Samantha falls from the tree like a dog and rips her tights. And then they stumble on Eddie's property where some new servants are being brought in. And you might realize, huh, these are really young children. You remember how I mentioned that child labor was a theme of this movie? Whoop, there it is. So Eddie immediately tries to get these girls in trouble because he is the spawn of Satan. And Samantha obviously immediately goes to defend the girls and help him. And apparently Samantha does not hate all redheads because she primarily becomes friends with the oldest sister, Nellie. So this scene is genuinely kind of funny because Samantha just didn't know that poor people were a thing. Don't pay any attention to him. Have to pay some attention, miss, if we want to keep our place here. And is appalled that this little Irish girl did not go to school and does not know how to read. Are you going to Mount Bedford School? Maybe we'll be in the same class. I don't go to school, miss. We're here to work. Oh. May I see you tomorrow? <laughs> like I said, I'll be working, miss. Her grandma calls her, so she skedaddles away to her own mansion. And in this scene, Samantha asks if there's a letter from her uncle guard. Remember when I mentioned being in love with your uncle? Yeah. Also, off topic, but I've genuinely never heard the name guard anywhere else before. And for the sake of comedy, because I'm a first grader, I will be referring to him as Uncle Barf. Moving on though, she runs into the little redhead again and she learns that she used to work in a factory and that her mom is dead. And she's like, you know what, girl? I'm gonna teach you how to read. And Ellie's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, rich girl. And then we were back at Samantha's house. This movie literally switches scenes so fast. But we got a package from the legendary Uncle Guard. Things are heating up. Then there's like a really really awkward situation between her and one of her maids. Jessie? Yes, miss? How old were you when you first started to work as a maid? Would you like anything else, ma'am? No, thank you, Jessie. That will be all. We do not discuss personal matters with the servants. And I just, I don't know if it's like 
trying to portray the horrible racism and labor rules at the time and like that part just came across as weird or if it's genuinely just problematic. Really not sure. But what's inside the package? Uncle Guard has given Samantha a vintage VR set or a stereopticon as the OGs like to call it and they are amazed by this. They're just looking at pictures and it's like a little 3D-ish but they are amazed. It's Paris, the Eiffel Tower. As if we were really there. I don't know who's gonna break it to this girl, but the world is not in black and white, but that's a topic for another discussion. <laughs> Anyway, they talk about different things and Samantha's like, my uncle guard's gonna take me to the World's Fair in St. Louis. And she's like, what's going on there? And they're describing it and stuff like that. We're going to see Japanese pagodas and temples and eat peanut butter and fairy floss. That's fairy floss. Uncle guard says it's made out of pink sugar and comes on a stick. It c what's on a stick? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Also guys, I'm sick right now, if you can't already tell. That being said, is my sixth voice sexy? Is my sixth voice, is my sixth voice sexy? Nah, look up, I can do that, nah, cause I'm sick. <laughs> anyway, Samantha's like, oh my God, my uncle's so great, I love him. And she's like, better <gasps> than your, your mom. mom Dad? Which one, that's like a weird thing to ask. Also, she hashtag triggered Samantha <laughs> because Samantha doesn't have a mom and dad because they're, be they're both dead, because they're both dead. Turns out they drowned in a lake or something in like a boating accident, so that's sad. But the good news is that Nellie and Samantha have now both trauma dumped on each other, which means they can start making their way towards true friendship through an extreme reading montage. That looks like fun. It does. But then we hear, and ah uh, yeah, Uncle Guard is here. It's about to get lit. So Uncle Guard rolls up to his mansion. I woke up in a noble guard. With a mysterious woman. Oh no, I hope this won't influence the plot or affect Samantha in any major way. She's a redhead. Samantha reunites with her uncle guard, which is very sweet and cute, no matter how weird it could be perceived, it's cute. And she gets to meet Miss Pitt. Please call me Cornelia. Ew, Samantha is polite too, but you can tell there's something going on behind those eyes. Anyway, uncle guard brings Cornelia and Samantha into Grand Mary. And she's like, why did you bring someone without my permission? And he's like, For funsies. And we actually realize here that guard is short for gardener, which is still stupid. Do you think Samantha's mom was named landscaper? That was a really stupid joke. I'm really sorry, actually. But none of that matters because Samantha gets to hop in for a sweet ride now. I woke up in a noble guard. Flash forward to family dinner where we learn that Miss Pitt or Cornelia is a liberal. I've been to enough family dinners to know where this is going. She wants women to vote, basically. Ugh, feminist these days. I bet she just sits alone in her house with her cats and cries to Taylor Swift. Can't, can't relate, you snowflake. And to make it even more awkward, Barfman announces that he and Cornelia are engaged to be married, which means Samantha is pissed because Cornelia is a redhead. So Samantha's all email and stuff and she's looking at pictures of the World Fair at her VR set and Uncle Guard is like, oh my God, yeah, the World's Fair and he's like, oh sh the world's fair. So Samantha's like, you're gonna leave me for a redhead. And he's like, no, no. And so he's sad because he's like, how do I make sure my orphaned niece does not feel like she wants to die? But he's a young man starting his new life, getting married, living in New York City. What is he gonna do? Kidnap her? Yeah, it's not, it's not that extreme. It's not like kidnapping, but like, you'll just see it later. And the movie continues with just cute wedding planning and more of Samantha teaching the little Irish girl how to read. But then Samantha overhears Uncle Barf trying to convince Grand Mary to let him take her to New York, which is, should be great, right? But he, he doesn't say it right. You'll be newly married. The last thing you'll need is a child on your hands. Well, she can come and stay with us in New York. Let us share the burden, mother. Yeah, no, I wonder why she was so hurt by that. It's not like you called her a burden or anything. Anyways, it goes without saying, but Samantha is once again emo. So she breaks onto the property that Ellie works on and snatches her. She's like, I'm sad, come be sad with me. And Ellie's like, 
girlhood right on yes but where they go i have a couple of questions about or concerns so remember how samantha's parents died in a boating accident samantha takes her to the boathouse and it's like filled to the brim with things that her parents owned or pictures that they had and yes it's somewhat sweet but dear god someone please get this girl therapy her and nelly sleep inside a boat which who knows if that boat was the boat that samantha's parents died in and honestly i wouldn't be shocked if samantha started having a seance right then and there and she brought nelly so she could sacrifice a redhead i think if you like changed the music behind this it would kind of sound like a scene from a horror movie this is my secret hiding place there are so many beautiful things here it's where my mother and father and i used to keep our boat but after they died no one came here anymore sometimes when i come here i feel like they're still here does she see dead people does she see dead people Anyway, so they wake up the next morning with a spawn of Satan yelling at them. Maybe the seance did work. And he ends up being a tattletale. But like Nelly gets like yelled at by her boss employer and it's actually really sad to watch like i, I get a little sad <laughs> I, get a, I get a little sad at it samantha's grandma and uncle barf go into the boat shed and they're like oh yeah she's a little f***ed up so they decide to let her go to new york city yay plot development we're getting somewhere and flash forward to the wedding yippee samantha's a bridesmaid everything's going well they're getting ready and oh f a toddler set cornelia's veil on fire <laughs> So now it's ruined. Wah, wah. But Samantha's like, nah, I'm a hoarder. So she goes to her <laughs> creepy boathouse and gets her mother's veil for Cornelia to wear. And this was a really sweet moment because it like resembles Samantha finally reconciling with another redhead. Then yay flowers, yay wedding, yay cake, yay Uncle Barf. And now Samantha is about to leave for New York City. But first, she knows she has to f*** some shit up one more time. Nellie finds Eddie's money jar, you know, the person who employs her. And she steals it and gives it to Samantha who donates it during mass right in front of him. <laughs> that's literally diabolical. <laughs> like, I know he's a but that's that's crazy that's fantastic i applaud her on that i point this out because no matter how many good things samantha may do she will always be that bitch and she does not want you to forget it after ruining a child's life savings nelly and samantha say goodbye to each other and it's so sad and then we get an artistic scene change to new york city side note the footsteps in this movie are amazing the foley artist for this movie did a fantastic job thank you they are so crisp and just listen to them Anyway, Samantha explores New York. We get like an old timey New York history lesson. Nellie has her stolen VR set and everything seems to be going great until Samantha gets to school because she's in middle school and there's no way anything can go right in middle school. So basically during her introduction, she mispronounces the Hudson River and all the girls in the class laugh at her because they're big. Hudson. 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 The Hudson, sorry. And apparently this moment just convinces Samantha that she's unable to make friends at this school. And yeah, it's a bit odd, but you know, it's middle school. We're all tortured souls. Kids, we all have a very new student in our class. I would like to introduce you to Samantha. Just like all of us, she's a big fan of Beyonce. Uh, Samantha, can you tell us where she was born? Hudson. <laughs> Houston. <laughs> Houston. She's a Houston, Texas baby. Oh my god, she's such a poser. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> no, she's such a fake fan. We can't be friends with her. <laughs> so this part of the story is narrated through Samantha's letters to Nellie and Nellie's letters to Samantha. And in one of Nellie's letters, she mentions that she's doing extra chores because her dad is sick. I wonder where this is going. So we're back at school and it's announced that there's a speech competition, which is great because Samantha knows that she will win it because she is that she decides that she wants to write about factories. Remember when I mentioned child labor? <laughs> Again? Yeah. Honestly, this movie is just Samantha learning about social justice in 1904, and I think that I think that's great. It's just really there's so many themes in this movie, it's crazy. And that's also because the next scene is a woman's suffrage meeting that is being held in Samantha's own house. And she's kind of intimidated because when she's asked to vote by like this like 
kind of aggressive woman. She doesn't know what to say because she's a child and hasn't really been educated. But like, I don't know if the old lady understands that because she looks like she wants to fight Samantha. She looks like it's on sight right now. Good night, Samantha. And while Samantha's practicing her speech one day, they open a letter to find out that Nellie's dad has died of the flu. I did not see that coming. Whoa. Whoa. Anyway, it's actually really sad, and they learn that the girls are in an orphanage named Cold Rock House. They really could have just said, this is a bad place, bad abusive orphanage with no family and just sadness and death. But, you know, Cold Rock House is basically the equivalent to that. When Uncle Guard gets back from visiting the orphanage, they find out that only people who are, like, serious about adoption can visit them. And they're like, that's odd. But luckily, Cornelia is just as much as a schemer as Samantha. So she's like, let me make some calls. Turns out Cornelia has some connections with the orphanage. So they go there under the guise of they're just giving donations and stuff. And they do do that but they also do it to break in. They meet the owner, Mrs. Frouchy. Grouchy with an F, it's really, it's really creative. And she's essentially every unethical middle-aged woman who hates children, which honestly, it's weird how common that niche is. And while they're about to go on the tour, this happens. Nancy, you wait. Walking to no speaking! And I just have to say, maybe this is revealing a bit of childhood trauma, but this is like completely normal to me. So I grew up in private schools my whole life and especially in like elementary school, this is just kind of how it is. Like, like when I was younger and watching this, I wasn't like put off by this. I was like, yeah, don't speak, duh. Hi, I'm editing right now and I don't think I clarified enough that that's not okay. Yelling at children is not okay. Abusive power systems over children especially is not okay and that kind of schooling and that kind of orf orphanaging in this movie is not okay. And I don't think I clarified that enough. So I would just like to clarify that. That's not okay. And I know that, and you should know it too. And these people in this movie should know it. <laughs> Okay, moving on. <laughs> but apparently Samantha has never been yelled at in her life because she's very put off by this. <laughs> they go to the younger girl's dormitory and I didn't really acknowledge this before, but Nellie has two younger sisters, Bridget and Jenny. Jenny, the tiny one, doesn't talk because of all the trauma she has in her life. That's concerning. And the middle one is Bridget, who was just always messing things up. For the sake of this video, Bridget is thing one and Jenny is thing two. And so they're like really excited to see Samantha. They're like, hey girl, what's up? And Samantha's like, hey. Also, shut the up, you're gonna blow my cover. So they get to the older girl's dormitory and Samantha starts tossing out fruit. She's scoping out for Nellie. She finds Nellie. She's like, dear God, you're being abused. You're so pale. And Nellie's like, Duh. And Samantha's like, we're being sus. Where can I see you? And Nellie's like, I take out ashes. And Samantha's like, perfect. I'll see you there. Later on, Samantha and Nellie rendezvous at the alleyway. And here we learn that Mrs. Crouchy is going to send Nellie off on the orphan train. This escalated very quickly. Samantha immediately decides that she has to think about what to do. Which, coming from Samantha, I'm a little scared right now. So next time Samantha comes, she's like, Nellie, let's go. Get your sisters, we're busting you out of this joint. And Nellie's like, pause, what? And she's like, girl, no time. Let's go right now. And so Nellie goes and snatches up her sisters and they run into Mrs. Grouchy Pants' office, which was not a smart decision. So Mrs. Grouchy walks into her office to launder her money from her orphanage of children with dead parents where girls are being abused. So they hide and then create the most stressful scene that I have ever experienced. <laughs> and Bridget sneezes like a dumb <laughs> Like, dude, just say watermelon three times in a row quickly under your breath. It's not that hard. So Mrs. Frouch is like, who's there? So they make a mad dash for Samantha's house. And Samantha also gets reported to the police, which is not a shocker. She did just steal children. Like that, that should have happened. The grouch followed Samantha and the girl's home. And she's like, she tattles to the maid about it. And the maid is completely unaware. So she gets pissed, defends Samantha and kicks the woman out of her house. Good day. I said, good day. But during this, Samantha was also accused of stealing the money that is being laundered. Which like, okay, accusing her of stealing the children, yeah, that's okay, because that actually happened. But do you really need to put stealing money on top of that? I'm sure stealing people is still going to get Samantha in trouble. You don't, like, she doesn't need the theft on top of that. Like, now you're just being a bit. So life continues with Samantha being all sneaky and while hiding three children in her house, unaware to her aunt and uncle for some reason. Next morning, Jenny runs downstairs and almost blows her cover and takes Samantha upstairs to the attic because Bridget is sick. Bridget can't do one thing right. 
God thing one. All you've done this whole movie is mess up and now you can't even control your immune system. Even though you're a very traumatized, overworked child with unstable living conditions. Like, come on, dude. Also, Nelly is gone because she found work at a factory. So Samantha finds the very subtly marked out location of the factory. Samantha goes to the factory and here we have the most traumatizing scene I have ever had to sit through, especially as a kid. Get in line behind them. Ah! Ah! Hold on, no! 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 Please! No! That needle no! breaks, it comes out of your pain. Ah, oh, look, that needle broke. Ah! Let's see what you've done. What the f Girl, girl, me too. What the f That scene honestly is my Roman Empire. It lives rent free up there. I just, I have never been the same since seeing it. After that traumatizing experience, Nellie is once again snatched up by Samantha to go help her sister. But since her sister is like dying and they're 10 year olds and not doctors, Samantha has to fess up. So she tells her aunt and uncle, and it's really funny because Cornelia straight up kind of seems proud but Uncle Guard is the only one with common sense. So they get a doctor for thing one and they talk to the girls before bed. And here, Nellie exposes the orphanage and spills the tea to Cornelia about it. Samantha brought us here to save me from being sent on the orphan train without my sisters. They're not supposed to separate families. Ma'am, they do a lot of things they're not supposed to. And if there's one thing that liberal feminists know how to do, it's canceled. So all the girls get sent up to bed except Samantha and Samantha gets scolded by Uncle Guard for stealing children. You know, I wonder why, but it, it turns into a really cute family bonding moment. And it's just, uh, ah, I'm really normal about this. Just, ah. And after this, Samantha is like, so like, can they stay? Also, I didn't steal the money. And Uncle Guard is like, girl, no, I'm telling the police. Like you kidnapped children. No. Me too, girl. Me too. So then we cut to a meeting between Miss Frouchy and the donor who was like Cornelia's connection to the thing, who was also the same lady who was ready to fight Samantha for not being a feminist earlier in the movie. And Mrs. Grouchy says they won't press charges as long as Samantha returns the money she stole. Hello? She stole people. She stole people, but you just care about making more money. I know it's the point to be like, oh, she's money hungry. She doesn't really care about the children, but still she stole people and you aren't pressing charges for that. You're pressing charges about a lie. Anyway, this Mrs. Frouchy gets canceled by Cornelia and her feminist friend. So she can no longer run the orphanage, which is a slay. But honestly, look at the absolute serve in this scene. You simply can't be serious. Oh yes, I simply can. Day. Slay, old woman. Slay. Give her what she deserves. Slay. Okay, like, I take it back. <laughs> like, I like her. She's actually my favorite character. She only knows how to serve and she does it well. So I forgot to mention this, but Samantha actually won a competition to give her speech about the factories on Christmas Eve at this like Christmas Eve thing. And her whole family is there. So she decides that she's going to make Aunt Cornelia proud. She decides to change her speech and exposes and cancels factories like the icon she is. Children are hurt in these places. I know, I saw one. If our factories can hurt children, then we have not made good progress in America. These words are not the words I had written, but are the words that I need to say. And you know what? Honestly, she's real for that because yes, unfair labor is obviously horrible and not okay. But like, if I saw what she saw in real life, I would never even like to hear the mention of a factory ever. I would be traumatized for life. She gets a standing ovation and then afterwards she runs to her family and her grandma is like, yes, girl, you served. And on the way back, they're laughing and goofing off and being so family and ah, it's just so cute. It's just so cute, guys. It's just so cute. And then like the true found family trope that this movie is, they ask Samantha to stay and if they can adopt her. Mm. Yes. I really like found family tropes. <laughs> so when they get back to their house after that very sweet moment, Christmas has literally thrown up. 
all over the house. And honestly, it's just so amazing and so Christmas, and so cute. And like, guys, I love Christmas so much and I love this movie so much. And obviously this movie is winding down to a conclusion, but you might be wondering, maybe what's going to happen to the little Irish girl in thing one and thing two? Don't worry, we have an answer for you. On Christmas morning, all the girls wake up and they set the girls on the steps and they're like, we need maids. And the girls are like, oh yeah, no. No, we're used to child labor, we can do that. And they're like, JK guys, let us adopt you. And they're like, oh my God, we're sisters. Also, when this happens, Jenny finally speaks. Jenny says yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this moment healed all of her trauma, which is great for her. So it ends with it all being so Christmas and so cute and they're all happy family and the orphans are happy and everything is snowing and it's great. And then with one last serve to the camera, Samantha's movie ends. And that is my favorite Christmas movie of all time with literally the most insane themes ever. I legitimately watch this movie maybe like twice a year. Also when it's not Christmas cause I don't really think it's a Christmas movie. And you know what? I'm not ashamed to admit that. For an American Girl doll, like straight to DVD movie, it's not sh There are sh movies out there. And if you like this video, then I definitely encourage you to physically like it. And if you haven't already, subscribe maybe? Subscribe, that'd be cool, that'd be fun. Interesting. There are so many more people here now, so definitely keep me updated on the content you guys want to see and if you like this style of content. I hope you guys enjoy this video and have a great holiday season. Love you. Also, I'm scared of sewing machines. Like, straight up. I've never used one because of this movie. <laughs>